And Greg was like, if there was like one thing that you'd really like to have in a card store, what would it be? And I was like, a shrimp club. <laughs> What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and I'm here with Joey Paladino. What's going on, Dragon Ballers? Good to be here. And we have a very special edition shrimp for you guys here today. I haven't told anybody in the world what we're going to be shrimping today, so it's brand new news for everybody except for me because it's inside my brain. But Joey, do you know what we're going to be shrimping today? I think I have an idea, so uh, why don't you crack it up? And you're going to have to definitely teach me the shrimp techniques for sure. We're going to be going over shrimp techniques in depth today. So if you are new to the shrimp lifestyle, we would like to invite you to the shrimp training um, technique. But get, get, let's see, what box do you think it's going to be? I think it's going to be something I, the name I deal with constantly. I don't know. I'm just having a, an inkling of an idea. Is it going to be cross world? It's not between worlds. No, it's cross. It's cross. a box from Japan. We got another box from Japan. It's a box of Dragon Ball cards and he knew it. It's cross worlds. It's because if you are a Dragon Baller, you know that you're in love with the YouTube channel, Cross Worlds TCG, which is Joey's channel. If you haven't subscribed already, you're making a huge mistake. You should have subscribed a long time ago. Listen to me, please. And just go over there, smush the subscription button button hit the little ding dong bell because if you want to be good at this game you have to be watching Joey it's a one-to-one -one relationship you can't do one without the other it's like night and day you can't have night without day unless you here we have a box from Japan this is cross worlds set three did you start playing at set three I started playing in set two but um, me and the majority of my friends got in at this set plus we were in California at the time so I was like oh I'm gonna keep the channel so that it can track like events all over the world so that's where we kind of thought oh the name cross world it's symbolic in many ways yeah it is it makes a lot of sense it's a really cool name and I think that three was also cool because that's when overrealm came in right that was yeah. like the first new skill that they introduced that was like here's a new skill to do new stuff with and it's still a super relevant skill yeah they previewed it a little bit in those uh, hero villain expansions and then yeah like said three was the first one where it really was prevalent yep. so i think what that signifies is even though you've been in the game a long time you're still really relevant <laughs> i appreciate that thank you very much i appreciate all the uh, <laughs> positive words about the channel i do yeah you guys it. really should check it out it's an amazing channel i watch it all the time joey's voice is playing in my head like in all the different rooms when i'm trying to get better at the game which i try to do but i'm definitely really good at shripping me now let's not waste too much more time if you guys first time here and you want to see shrippums and deck profiles and me in a hat or a bandana with a mustache saying things in front of a camera like this go down there and smush that subscription button and you can really hit that little ding dong bell to get yourself reminders when i make my new videos if you're a returning member of the Joe Crew and a Dragon Baller, welcome to this special edition crossover, cross worlds, cross world, cross worlds, cross worlds, cross worlds, cross worlds, cross worlds. rip them. Should be a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, let's get into this thing. So I'm gonna, I got the, I got the box on my camera here. Now there's a couple things that are really important in strip them technique. You really want to have a dedicated strip them knife. A lot of people make the mistake of using their fingernails, which you can hurt yourself and then ruin your fingers and you need your fingers. But having a dedicated strip them knife, especially something with a dragon on it, really augments your ability to get into the strip them lifestyle. Um, so here, Joey, why don't you do the honors here? All I'll right. Give you the strip them knife. Let's make sure I don't cut myself in a million pieces. Yeah, yeah, don't cut yourself in a million. If you cut them in two, that might be more manageable. What do we think? We think no, right no, here? here? No, 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 I'll show you. There's a, there's show a, me the incision there's point. A, there's a, there is a specific incision point. It's along this, the, the, the uh, wrapping. Yeah, you just get right in there. I see the math. Yes, you've got it. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, I don't think I it's cut. a. You have to commit when you're making an incision. Aha! Uh -huh. If you don't. Nice. Now you rip the rest. Take care of that knife. Yeah. And then you just start stripping me. Yeah. Take the knife away that's from me. I'm the, dangerous with that. Yeah. That's it's a it's a stripping lifestyle technique. Amazing. Step one success. Thing here. So and then the next thing that we have to do bless them a pack. Let's uh let's get this box up. Were there any? Was there a box top or anything? No. Nah. Not that came out a little bit later. That yeah. came. Set four came with the big leaders. Right? Yeah. That yep. was the first thing I think. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get these packs out of here and get this box out of here. We'll pick that up later. <laughs> then, yeah, my, my pirate layer is a mess. If you've ever been here, you've known that everything is strewn all over the place. Oh, we're shuffling them up. No mapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No no mapping these boxes. And then we got to split them half and half. Looks like it's looks about half even. and half. That looks like about half and half. And then um, since we're doing a collaborative trip, and it's very important that we split them half. No, then we are going to have to recount. <sighs> well, we're too deep now. We're both going to have 12 packs. This is a 12 pack dual cross worlds strip them. United, Shrippums Unite. <laughs> so the thing about Shrippum is you, the, the first thing you wanna do 
is appreciate how beautiful the pack art is. Oh, when because, I get to your pack, I'm gonna be, that was my favorite leader in the set, so I'll definitely be appreciating that. Oh, let's trade. Let's trade then, cool. This, this is absolutely my favorite leader in the set. Nice. <laughs> I, uh, I like Mira a lot. Mira, I thought, was a very interesting character that intrigued me a lot in Dragon Ball Heroes. But when you're shrippaming, you want to identify the shrippam nub. That's what I refer to it as. The shrippam nub is right here. And if you're right-handed or left-handed, it's going to determine where you want the shrippam nub to be. So I am right-handed. So I support the pack with my right hand and I shrip them with my left hand. Uh -huh. So I get my left hand to the shrippam nub here. And one of the problems that a lot of people have when they shrip them is they'll strip them out on this angle and you'll just get this little opening and then you have to like pull the rest apart. That's definitely me, yep, that's definitely you, me. You gotta commit. You have to visualize where you want your strip them to go because if you don't visualize the journey of your strip them, you're gonna end up with some weak strip them off the side. So you really gotta grab in here, commit, and strip them down. Oh, you strip them, strip them. That's oh. what I'm saying. Okay, I'm gonna try, ready? Oh, I suck. <laughs> oh no, that was such an epic fail. Well, we have 11 packs left. That to was figure such it out. An epic <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. It, it takes oh, no. it takes work, man. You can't just you can't just imagine that you're gonna go to bed one day and then you're gonna wake up and be a king stripper. That's you know, just, I take, gotta work at it. Yeah, it takes energy, and I just go to the. Oh, you shot! You oh, SPR. Yeah. Uh, the first, this was the pack you were gonna pull. Dang. I stole the SPR you were gonna pull, dude. I stole you know what? the thunder. I still live by the by the Goku leader. By the leader? Well, maybe we'll find the leader. This is this is a beautiful SPR. I it's not nearly as playable as it was once a time, once upon a time. But Shigesh with this guy, that was the wave, right? That card if he's super broken. It was one of my favorite plays in the game that time. Like I was a degenerate. I played Mecha Frieza back then. But it was super fun. It was super, super fun. <laughs> and this this card would just come out off of Shigesh and pop something, right? Yeah, yeah, it would just come in, pop something in rest mode, and then you had your blocker with uh I believe it's a barrier on it, right? Yeah, barrier yeah, blocker. Yeah, so just no one could deal with it. Yeah, it was awesome. That's awesome. And then um what's cool about the SPRs, so SPRs in this set, you weren't actually even guaranteed to get an SPR in a box. There are only at four SPRs per case, oh, which wow. means that you have a similar drop rate of SPRs as you do of like signature cards and other sets. So SPRs from these sets, I think are gonna be pretty dang valuable in time. And they have this really cool texture foiling pattern also that you can kind of see here um, on the, it's like a embossed foiling, which we don't have in the current set, but in the newer sets, they've advanced the gold stamp a lot. So the gold stamp is a lot more advanced than those cards. Whereas in these earlier sets, there were more texture foilings that were going on. But since this is an SPR, we're gonna have to take a little closer look at this one here. I've heard about these loops, now I get to see them in real life. <laughs> so the cards, uh, just because a card is not useful, it doesn't mean that it's not gonna be not useful in the future. Right, right. There's a lot of cards that will come back and this card definitely isn't banned. It's very, very useful for a long time, but I could definitely see this card coming back in because it's just, it's a strong card. Yeah. You're not gonna pay three energy for it and just play it on your turn, but if there's ways to cheat this out in a combo step or something during your battle phase where you can get this out like you used to be able to, it's definitely gonna have value again, and I think SPRs of this are relatively cheap, but- Oh God, oh, oh, ow, whoa! Oh, my eyeballs. You gotta be careful looking at these things with your eyes, because if you look too long, you're gonna you're gonna damage your eyes holes. Your eye, your whole eye hole will turn into a hole into your head when you look, oh God, it's so beautiful. Like looking right into the sun. It's like looking at your sun. The sun, but maybe. <laughs> oh my God. Those things are my drops. <laughs> it's so beautiful, I just, uh, I can't take the, they're not real tears, they're Dragon Ball Roto eye drops. Oh, I thought they were eye drops, which is why I they thought are. you were putting them in, but they you're are. just they're Dragon Ball eye tears. drops. <laughs> but I also, it just gets really emotional for me, you know, when these cards are so beautiful and I have these really strong glasses. Oh, oh, wow. This is something, this is a moment that's gonna be recorded for the history of Dragon Ball history, Dragon Ballers and Joe Crew. I don't think anyone that watches this video is gonna be able to forget what, what they saw here. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I may want to because it's going to make me cry every time I think about it. But that's part of life, you know? The strongest men cry the biggest tears. So I've learned from one piece. All right, well, that's that's the SPR. We pulled it out of the first pack and I stole it from Joey. So I, I, no, I willingly traded that. I willingly traded that. Fair it. enough, fair no, enough. No stealing. All right, now let's let's keep working. As I continue crying here, let's really work on this strip technique. Are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm left-handed. You're left-handed. Okay, so it feels right supporting the pack in your, in your uh, Yeah, I've always, I've always opened packs like this, so okay, I guess. So it makes yeah. sense. So really try and visualize the strip I'm going down. Did you see where this opposite nub is? Little down nipple here? down here? Yeah, yeah, yeah aim yeah. to the nipple. Like aim it and then 
you pull kind of out a little bit and then just pull down. Oh, All man. Right. I made a fool of myself. I'm going for it. I'm over here. Like, yo, oh, oh, shot! We traded shrimp and powers. He did it. He yeah, landed me he in a strike. It. That is it. It's happened right away. And just like that, you could become shrimp and kings as well. Yeah, those rares. I think there were parallel foils in oh, this set snap. also. Nice. This card was so awesome back in the day. Like, I don't even remember what deck it was. Oh, yeah, it was veggies. It was veggies. This is like one of the best turn one plays where you can like play this, look for your different veggie pieces. It was really, this card was awesome. That was, that was like one of the first really versatile searchers, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It gave yeah. you some options. Yeah, and there weren't there weren't a lot of one drops that drew back there. I mean, the one drop power creep in this game is definitely... Oh, yeah, one drop has, or one drop has to like, you know, put you on its back and then run, a, run 10 miles for it to be good, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next strip them. Let's go. Oh man, this art's so good looking. We're back to my favorite leader. Let's let's see. Strip them. Yeah, All dude, right. look at that. You're doing Not it. Not the cleanest, You're really but doing it. One strip them at a time. Getting a little better. Oh. Another. Oh, super rare. Oh, 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 nice. Nice. Uh, and I got right. this uh, this uh, mana field mana. I'm surprised this card isn't. I guess two is a pretty big investment. I was just thinking about it. It just it's funny how much of a, like a quote unquote flop that card was because like people saw it I was like wow this is really cool like a mana dork but like the problem is you use it and then it dies super easily that's right, like one of the somebody problems just swings at it right? yeah yeah and it's like what are you gonna put two energy into that card i think is also really good if there's a way to get that guy out sooner yeah and like, it looks super nice too this card looks amazing yeah for a non-spr like a sr it looks super yeah nice. what does it do again it's a xeno evolve i believe right? it's like a board wipe uh when, you, when a card evolves with this card, if your leader card is black, you may choose five cards from your warp, place them in your drop area. If you do, send all of your opponent's battle cards to their warp. This card's actually super interesting because this is one of the very few cards that gets around barrier because it does not actually choose. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that just, wait, does it say all your opponent's cards? Yeah, send all of your opponent's cards so to So would that get warp. rid of a unison? Uh, send all your opponent's battle, no, send all no, your opponent's battle cards. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Oof, thought we might have broken something there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe by the end of this video we will. Maybe, maybe by the end of this video. Hey, oh, I failed. This is going to be a leader. I and failed you. My, my sense, I failed my sensei here. It's okay, dude. You're getting there. You're getting there. I believe in you. What other SR? You, dang. You can't just... Yeah, two, two SRs and back-to-back -back packs. That's a good looking one, too. Yeah, absolutely. This one actually was pretty meta playable, too, for a while. Especially in like, the Mecha GT decks. What you got in your hand is pretty funny because people like absolutely hated rare leaders because it just felt so bad to like look at the back of a pack and you know that's where the foil yeah, is and, you know and then you see the opposite side of a leader and you're just like yeah. dang that's super lame. It's, yeah. it's nice that they stopped doing that. Yeah, I think it is also. I mean, I like I think the parallel foil leaders look really cool and it's exciting to get the uh, pre-release leaders. You know, you get that little stamp on there and feel like you have more value. Man, I got three UI packs in a row. I love UI sign. That was I was playing. Uh, I was playing him in uh, with uh, with a boonie and playing the, the you know the five drop anniversary pack one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is a good another one. super rare. Holy dude, crap, dude, we're just like whipping SRs out. You shuffled them in my favor. Oh yeah, one too, nice. I used to be so afraid of that card. Like back you know back in the day when I was much more new to the game. Like my friend had an Android 13 deck that could like when you play two of those back to back, they like just proc each other and like instantaneously rip your entire hand really so just super annoying back in the day yeah but. hand control is definitely my least favorite mechanic i would say but it's necessary for green because green doesn't have too much else yeah plus some decks can definitely draw a little bit too much oh. yeah yeah that's true that's true fair enough i guess it's situational boo yeah. and there's some nice answers to it as well Ooh, a rare leader you boo Ooh, parallel foil though, great. Nice. That's, that's a good card i think isn't it it isn't is cool it? yeah it's like a one energy discard an android draw two yeah it's pretty cool Huh. Um, oh, if your leader's an android, don't have to touch an android. Nice. Yeah, this is a uh, thick boo. Too much protein, not enough time to digest. Yeah, he's like super niche. I think it's just like when they showed a little bit of backstory from when he fought the Kai. Yeah, originally. There was, he was like in like one shot. Yeah. Super do. beefy boy. Yeah, I'd love to learn more about that whole boo and the Kai's thing. What really went down in that story? Oh, yeah. Dude, you're getting it, man. The consistency. This is my second Vegito leader. I mean, it's a beautiful card, though. This leader looks, like, great. That nice. Majin Buu's actually... He, he pops up in things. Whenever there's a Buu chain, he's, like, an option in a couple different things. I yeah. Think. It's pretty cool when cards just are weird like this, like a blue Majin Buu cost of five, because, like, any boo, blue Buu cost of five that comes out in the future is, like, an option. Blue Buu. Blue Buu. Boo, cost boo, of boo, five. Boo. Cost <laughs> of five, yeah. I'll get it one day. <laughs> This guy, this card is also super strong in the meta as well with yeah, uh, he, Mecha Apes. Yeah, he jumped. Yeah, he, he jumped back in 
a moment ago, a couple couple sets ago, people were playing apes. Yeah, and, red, yellow apes. Yeah, right? Yeah, because there was like a Vegeta could arrival, evolve that guy on top. Oh, I missed that one up. I got a leader in this one. Pan. Ooh, people want to reboot leader. her real bad. What would what do you think they would reboot if they rebooted her? Like, what would they change? I mean, it's actually kind of weird because I think the leader is like Strong, already right? pretty solid. Like you have draw power in the front, draw power on the back. You have uh, you're untapped too. It is untapped too. So it's it's I the only the only thing they could really add is like maybe an attack draw on the front side. Um, but that yeah. might just be a little bit too overboard, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, that might be a lot, because then it would be drawing two, right? Exactly, yeah, I'd be drawing a lot per turn, yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll maybe take off the buff draw and just have a swing draw. Maybe, yeah. Maybe some self awakening could be cool, too. Yeah, that would be cool. Shrip them. And, ooh, SR, one of the most useless cards ever. That's a good ooh, card. Ooh, that's a good one. This, this one's awesome going up in price, card. isn't it? Is it? I, I last I checked, like, because there have been some random like combo decks where you could play this thing. Uh, not yeah. not super recently. I mean, it's a good card. Yeah, for sure. It's like, just like it just untaps and swings again, right? Yeah, because really cheap boss monster. It goes like sixty like, k. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, it's nutty. I'd like to see more support for real though. That'd be pretty cool. More support. For what real, does this though. card even do? Uh, double strike. Activate main once per turn. Place one planet M two from your hand or battle area drop area. Draw two cards and choose one of your opponent's battle cards. Lose five k for the turn. Then choose all of your opponent's battle cards and lose. That's good. Yeah, it's That's interesting. a good skill, and it comes out on a five drop. Uh, it seems like the way that they support these things in like anniversary boxes and stuff is they don't give it. They. They'll either make a more playable evolve target, right. or they'll play something that pulls the card out. Yep. So it's like the card dictates the evolution on top of it, which I think is cool because you see a lot of cards and you're like, oh, this card's dead. But then it's like, yeah, no, it's not. It actually has this really strong skill, and you don't have to wait till turn six to play it. Now. And they did do some anniversary box stuff for real though, but it never ended up being too good. And it's right. like probably in the first yep. anniversary box or yep. something. Ooh, I think this uh, most evil absorption in history. I th feel like I've seen this in lists. I don't remember what it does, to be honest. Uh, no, it's useless. <laughs> Unless it was free somehow. This is shiny poop. Shiny poop. Oh, dude, my vocabulary is uh, immaculate. Shiny, <laughs> shiny poop. <laughs> Majin Defender, South Supreme Kai. I don't know if I have a, a parallel for oh, oh, the band leader. SS3. Oh, man. This hey, dude looked like boy. trash when Mecha was legal, and then Mecha got banned, and this dude was super, super <laughs> broken. <laughs> Good times. Um, so Good he times. actually has an art in the original IC Cardass game, and you can see his legs. Did you know SS3 had legs? I kind of assumed, but I was like, there might be a possibility he doesn't have legs, <laughs> but can, I thought he would. You can never be totally sure. Not, you gotta see him. No legs, no... Uh, Alright, this is the last shrimp. No oh my god, we forgot to bless him the pack. Oh goodness, what do we All do? Right, so I'm gonna bless him your pack, you bless him my pack. How do this I do is this? This is the last pack, you just touch it and bless it. Some I'll freaky voodoo stuff? Pack it, be blessed, yeah, really, really freaky. This is gonna scare the crap out of you. <laughs> oh, pack it, be blessed, the packet, true, this Goku is blessed unto you. I hope this pack is really good for Joku. It's <laughs> <laughs> my blessing. And it's a sh Oh, I did a good one in the last one, nice. I'm happy, my day is made. Yeah. Ooh, boo, leader, nice, value, shiny, not really value, but this is a good looking leader. This card's pretty cool, yeah, this card can't be countered, which is it's a definitely a pretty strong effect, yeah, especially it, for the time it was printed. It combos with like your energy or something, doesn't it? Yeah, if you have five battle cards and energy and combo with them, that's actually that's pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty it's crazy. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like a lot of these cards, you know, like if they just had the right support, could become very relevant. Yeah, yeah. people love legacy support, so I'm sure they're going to be doing that soon. Yeah. Anyway, guys, this has been the Shrip'em. I hope you guys have enjoyed this Shrip'em adventure. We went over Shrip'em technique. I started crying. I pulled an SPR out of the first pack, which I stole from Joey against anything that he was okay with. But we've made up for it. We had a discussion about it, and we're cool with it now. Um, he didn't beat me up too bad. We're good. Yeah. I only got this. He, sh he he shot me with a Kamehameha. I actually took a sucker fish and just like <laughs> plowed it right in his arm, but I like, didn't really do and too much. And then I tried to Misenko Sampo, and then I realized that I not actually have that power. It is my honor to have Joey here with me, shrimp him. In. It, you know, I never thought there would be a day that I would have him up in my lair and teach him how to shrimp him, and then I would steal an SPR right out of his pack without either of us knowing it until it happened. Guys, 110%, make sure to subscribe to Joku. The stuff he does here is awesome. Like. 
I usually don't enjoy pack opening content, but Joku is a very enjoyable one to watch for me because he's just super entertaining. Like, that's just my honest opinion. So it's super awesome. <laughs> he's crying again, dude. Like, it's just super fun being here. It's super fun doing this video. Uh, you yeah, guys definitely have to subscribe for more awesome content. God, my heart. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching my video. You know, I really appreciate you coming by. I hope you subscribe. Uh, I want to say thanks to everybody for this amazing opportunity to strip my life away. Uh, <laughs> wait. Oh, yeah, I'm a dentist. I can't end the episode without doing a dental tooth tip. So, Joey poses this great question. He asks if you can grow enamel back. You cannot grow enamel back. It's not possible. However, you can strengthen the enamel that you have. So your enamel is made out of something called hydroxyapatite, which is funny because when you're hungry, you have an appetite, but there is a rare earth mineral called appetite. It is a crystal and it's what your enamel is made out of. So your enamel is a crystalline structure, which means you have gemstones hanging out of your skull, which are your teeth. Gemstones are valuable. Teeth are a lot more valuable to replace. So you should take care of them. And if your enamel is getting weak, the way that you can strengthen it is by using fluoride in your diet and your toothpaste. Make sure you get your fluoride treatments when you go to your dentist. And what fluoride does is it binds the hydroxy ion of the hydroxy appetite and it creates a secondary crystalline structure outside of the crystalline structure that exists. So it essentially works as a secondary layer of enamel. So though you can't grow your enamel back, you can strengthen the enamel that you have. And there are a number of things that are detrimental to your enamel, like acidic foods, lemons, um, you know, biting on nails, coffee things maybe? like that. Coffee can be bad. The acidity from coffee can be bad. But a good rule of thumb is anytime you have something acidic, if you're worried about your enamel strength, get some water, rinse with water, especially if it's tap water. Most tap water has fluoride in it. And toothpaste like Pronamel that have stannous fluoride and potassium nitrate really help strengthen your enamel more so than other toothpastes that have a higher detergent ratio in it. So in a toothpaste, the detergent acts as a limiting reagent for the fluoride. So toothpaste that bubble more end up not actually strengthening your teeth as much, even though they feel like they're cleaning more. So I really highly recommend Pro Enamel. It's what I use. So all I got from this was scrape the crystals off my teeth and sell them for a million dollars. Thank you guys for coming by. This has been the Joku Shoku. I've never even said that. It First says, time for everything, dude. Yeah, it says Joku Shoku at the beginning of every one of my shrimp. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for coming by, and I'll see you over at the Crossworlds channel. Also, don't forget, Dragon Ballers, go smush the subscription button. Peace. Dental tooth tip. Um, God, I'm just crying so much. It's so hard to think about dentistry right now. Is it actually possible to grow enamel back? Is that actually a thing? Growing enamel back? That's a great question. Hang on, let me stop crying. I just had to cry for the moment. I feel like you see Toothpaste and says, you'll grow your enamel back. And then my mom was like, that's not true. It doesn't work like that. And I'm like, I'm just, I just don't know. You know? I want to give you an answer to that as a dentist that isn't crying. <clears throat> no, I'm not crying. Those aren't tears. I just, I had something in my eye. The camera's crying. Yeah, the camera's crying. I'm not crying. It was just a, I had a, there's, there was a flake of dust. It, my house has one flake of dust and it landed in one of my eyes. So that's the only reason that I look like this. Is my mustache doing all awful things? I didn't even curl it before this. It looks normally twirly to me. God, I'm such a mess. I'm a hot mess, Steve. It, it's a good looking mustache, man. I got Steve to talk to you guys <laughs> in the video. Hey, Dragon Ballers. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to do it one time. Just one time. <laughs> Alright, let me wipe these tears off my face and talk about enamel. Come on, Joku, you can do this. <laughs> Alright, I'm a dentist. I can't end without doing it.